Hello everyone and welcome back to Haverford Sports Media. My name is Connor Salveson and for the first time this season, I have my good friend Max Capello next to me to call a game. Max, how are you doing tonight? Doing great. I just got off a great call from the girls game, so I'm feeling great. Girls pulled out a huge win over, over Central Buck South just a couple minutes ago. And now they're rolling right into it here at the Younger Gymnasium with the Haverford Fords facing off against the Dobbins Mustangs. Max, this is the first time in history the Fords have played this Dobbins team. Yeah, it is. And this Dobbins team was really good last year. I mean, they went 25-3 and in, in total and 11-0 and in conference play. So, Yeah, they won the, the Philadelphia Public League C Division. Their season ended in the first round of the PIAA Class 5, um, 5A playoffs, and they lost to the number one seed out of District 2, Abington Heights. They went on to lose to Imhotep, the Philadelphia Public League's own. But the move here for Dobbins this season is they're going from the Public League C Division to the A Division, which is a huge leap for them. They're, you know, in the city, so they're now facing some traditional Philly powerhouse like Imhotep, Math, Civics, and Sciences, Lincoln, West Philly, Constitution. They're playing teams that they never thought they'd play. So, though this is their record for last year, you cannot expect the same for them this year. Their head coach, Derek Stanton, he's made strides quickly here with his time at Dobbins. His first year, um, they reached the league semifinals. And then, of course, just this past year, uh, this last season, they got into the state playoffs. So Coach Stanton's done a heck of a job here at Dobbins so far, and he's looking to continue that. They believe, and they're claiming, this is a win the Philadelphia Public League or a bust. That's how confident they are in this team. Yeah, but you talk about their coach. Let's talk about our coach. Absolutely. Our coach, um, our coach Keith Heinrichs, has been good for a while, Connor. And he has been good for a while. And if you watched the games last year, and this, you're just now joining us, for this year, you're going to want notice one main difference, and that's because for the first time since the 2017-18 season, there's not a sideman on the court. There isn't. And so Coach Heinrichs is going to have to kind of flip the switch, and watching the scrimmage, not seeing Googie uh, or even John out there, it was a big change for the Fords and the way they facilitate the ball. It's a lot different without a sideman out there. But they handled themselves very well. That they did. They have a couple young guys, Andrew Steigerman, Reese Fitzgibbons, Jack Rach is a senior. They are the guys that are going to be scoring points for the Fords. As we have the starting lineups being announced, we will get back to you guys soon following it. We're going to make some notes here on who's starting for the Mustangs, who's starting for the Fords, and we'll get right back. As we just got confirmation of the starting lineups here for this out of league matchup for the Mustangs, they they though they did lose one guy. They lost um, Kareem Diaz last season. He was a first team All PPL C Division selection. They do have Zach Campbell. He's one of the best returning players in the Philadelphia Public League. He's back. He was an All Public League. Um, a selection last season. Salim Hudson, number three for the Mustangs. He's one of your guys. He's your home run hitter in every sense. He's going to be the one scoring points. That's number three, Salim Hudson. He was a second team all um, PPL selection last season. They have Gerald Little starting with Campbell and Hudson. And of course, rounding it out is Sam Thomas and Hanif Davis. But behind that, they have 6'3 uh, junior Ty Lee Richardson and 6'2 sophomore guard Makai Ackridge and Kasim Jacobs as well. So something to note is Samuel J excuse me, Samuel Thomas. He's starting today and it's gonna be his first game back uh, in regular season play. He suffered a leg injury in the state playoff loss to Impotep uh, excuse me to 
Ab- uh, yeah, to Abington Heights last season late in the year. So it, it'll be interesting to see how he comes back from that injury and uh, see if he can return at full form, which I'm expecting him, and the forwards have to be expecting him to. Yeah, I expect that too. But, um, you know, I'm ready to call some basketball, Connor. And that's exactly right. We have a very special guest with us tonight. We'll get him on at halftime. He's very excited to be here, and we're very excited to have him. It's Jack from Coopertown, and uh, we're excited to have him on at halftime. But for now, it's focused up on these fours. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Haverford and Dobbins both, they've been playing basketball throughout the summer. They, these two teams faced up in a summer matchup. Dobbins came out on top in a close and very winnable game for the Fords. So don't expect a blowout tonight, even though you may see one either way. The Fords, uh, in a couple of the games they had, you see Steigelman had 22 points, 8 rebounds, 2 assists. If he didn't get poked in the eye and had to leave the game, he probably would have had a lot more. I'm not sure what happened here, but it looks like I'm guessing a technical foul was called. And the Ford's going to start with some easy points here. Stogman's going to knock one in. So, Connor, in high school basketball, you're not allowed to dunk in the warm-ups. So oh. maybe that's what happened. I'm guessing that's what happened. So Stogman's going to knock those two in and lead the Ford's out to an early lead. It. And Haverford's going to get the ball. So, I mean, if you're Dobbins, you're obviously not worried. It's two points. But in the end, that's something that can cost you a game. you got to be careful about that. It is a jump ball, though. I guess because the game didn't start yet. Typically, a technical foul would be a the shots and the ball, but I guess Fitzgibbons and Thomas were there for the tip-off, and the Fords are on their way with possession and two points on the board before the clock even started. Demling, the late addition to the starting five for the Fords. Heinrichs, the only returning starter as the Fords lost four seniors last year, a couple playing basketball still in college, trying to find an open shot. Keith Heinrichs was one of those guys last year who facilitated the ball. He found the open man. He was a playmaker. Rach is a guy who we saw get some playing time late last year as well as Fitzgibbon goes up. No good. Good board by Sam Thomas. They go over to the man in Hudson. Hudson trying to look for an open man. He's got Thomas. They go back up to the top. Number two, three. Rims out. No good. Good board. Whistleblown foul called. Zach Campbell. That's that first team. All Philadelphia Public League selection last season. Finding an open shot. It's a good look. Just didn't go this time. On the floor. and He's going to find it again. Campbell driving in. Using those elbows. They find an open man. Three ball off the back of the rim again. And heavy contact. Flipping down. It looks like they call a block there on the fourth. Little will pass this ball in. They're going to bounce right back to Thomas. Up top to Hudson. They're going to swing it over there. There we go. A shot again. Looks like they're, they're really using the three ball early to try to put points on the board. It looks like that's going to be the type of team we're going to see. And heavy press all game long. Coach Heinrichs told us the one way we have to beat this team is eliminate turnovers and escape the heavy press that they're going to run all game long. Yeah, and that's, that's one thing I think is going to play to the Ford's advantage, though, because they're quick. They're really fast because they're not that big anymore. Nope. They're, they're going to be undersized the majority of the matchups, and that's just a fact on the roster we have. But yet that does not mean that this team is less athletic. This team has grit. This team is going to win a lot of the games just because of pure love of the game and determination. Rage deep three, no good. Board by Little. 6-14 to go in the first quarter. Goes over to Hanif Davis. It's now Little once again with the ball at the top of the key. Spinning back, guarded one-on-one -on -one with Demling. They go back over to the wing, over to Hudson. Again, it's just a lot of perimeter passing. They're not penetrating the paint at all. That's because Fitzgibbon's doing a great job. Up there again, no good, off the rim. And, Connor, honestly, this, this uh, Dobbins team isn't that big either. They're around actually the same size as the Fords. So. Probably a little bigger overall. Good steal here by Davis, all the way, Davis. No good. Good putback there by Campbell, and that'll tie this game up. But again, when it's early in the season, but when you start pushing late and you're playing for you know playoff seating, that's a play, a fast break you have to execute on. Steigelman calling the plays here. Good defense once again by the Mustangs. This time it's Little knocking this ball out. Wow. 
Some substitutions here for the forwards. We're going to see Ian McClafferty get some playing time here. We weren't sure. And Morris has checked in as well. So you'll still see Demling, Steigelman, and Reese Fitzgibbons. Fitzgibbons with the ball. Swing it over. Steigelman, good fake. He gets the defender falling. But they recover well. Good play by Salim Hudson. And the Mustangs are back on the offensive possession. Under five minutes to go in the first quarter. Gerald Little up at the top calling the shots. Trying to find an open man. They go over to Hudson. Hudson, they go down to the post. It's the first time we've seen him take a shot like that. Good, and he falls. Zach Campbell is fourth of the night. And so far, he's got all of the points all on the Mustangs board. Yeah, and this Mustang team looks like to be just looking to get a jump shot. That's it. Fitzgibbons, three ball. Good! Now they put the Fords up one here. That's the first three point of the season for the Fords, one of many you're going to see throughout this game and throughout this season. I agree. Mustangs trying to come back from that. 4-11 to go in the first. Little one-on-one with Stockman. Good pick there. They go back up. Three ball. No good. He's struggled from the top. Fake the three. Good pivot up top. No good once again. They're probably 0 for 5 here on the three. The Mustangs struggling from deep. And the Ford's offense is back and rolling. Coach Heinrichs barking out orders. Demling sets a screen, moving. Whistle. That's on the Mustangs. And I feel like the Mustangs are a physical team, Connor. They're going to get fouls. I know the Fords are up on them in fouls right now, but they're going to get fouls. 3.40. And counting here. Stogman trying to find an open man. Morris coming out of the flat there. They find Demling up top. They're going to the corner with Morris. Morris looking in their fits. Gibbons. Reese trying to find one up top. Stogman fakes it to Demling up and off the back of the rim. Bounces up. No good. Forward by Sam Thomas. He goes up the Hudson. Here goes Salim Hudson. He fakes left. Goes right. Pops back up. Corner. Campbell. Three. Front rim. No good. Fitz Gibbons with the board. 3-12 to go. Low scoring affair here in the first quarter. Five to four in favor of the home team. Have it. George Demling goes back to Stogman. Morris is going to come out from the corner here. Good move by Stogman. No one's there now. He goes corner. It's Gibbons. Once the three doesn't take it, you know he can use his size to get inside, but it'll be a turnover. Zachary Campbell up. It's a block. Gets the call he wants, and he'll go to the line for two. Again, Coach Stanton doing a very good job staying composed and talking to these guys. He seems like he's building an environment where players want to go and where they want to win. It's something that you like to see yep. as they send who else but Zachary Campbell to the line. Again, he has all four of Dobbins' points. We'll see if he can tie this game up with this foul shot here. Good. So there you go. That's Campbell with his fifth point. Dobbins with his fifth, fifth point as we have substitutions. Fitzgibbon is out for Rach, and it looks like we have Billy Williams getting his first playing time of the season. As we have Demling check out the second foul shot here for Campbell is good. String music here from Campbell early on. And Connor, it looks like he's gonna be their key player for this game. I mean, I know he has all six points, but it's a really good ball player. Pass is going to work out in their favor. They go back. Morris, good fake. He's going in. Oh, through the hands of McLaughlin, but they're back. Rage, good fake. Driving in corner. Morris, three blocked by the Mustang, Sam Thomas. Not too many substitutions here for Dobbins, though. They're kind of running with the same guys. And I guess if you're confident in your guys and they're not tired, you don't need subs. But if you're Haverford, you have these guys who are all, you know, could be considered equal and uh, you know you're, you're, you can use them. Rage three ball, good. It's another, a, it's another three. It's a great court. shot by Jack Rage. I mean, I know he's a big guy inside, but Campbell answers back. That's all nine points for the Mustangs, thanks to Zachary Campbell. Morris got to get it across half court. They don't. They're gonna call the foul. I think. Oh no. Yeah, it should be called on Hanif Davis. We'll see. Yep, it looks like it was on Davis. So Rachel will throw this ball in. 
And what a good matchup we have. We are expecting it. It's under two minutes to go in the first quarter. It's 9-8. We're going to have some more substitutions. Fitzgibbons is back. Clafferty, McClafferty is out. Mara Steigelman. Going to cross over the midcourt stripe and into attacking territory. Billy Williams. That is a sleeper man right there. Do not let him get open. He has a shot that you will not expect. Morris getting double teamed. Davis drops back. They'll give Fitzgibbon one on one with Zachary Campbell. Calls Rach out. Rach bounce pass over to Steigelman. Fitzgibbon's in. They find Morris. Rach is to his right. Then the foul is going to be called there on Campbell, reaching in. And I want to talk about Billy Williams here for a little bit, Connor. He he was hurt last year, so you never got to see him. But he gives me a little bit of flashbacks to Kevin Gannon. Guy who has a great shot that you just won't see a lot. That's the thing, Max, is though you have four or five new varsity starters, there's so many comparisons you can make between this year's team, last year's team, and even the year before that. It's Hudson up, and it's good. That's the first points for Hudson. And that's the first three-point lead of this game. It's like you can even compare it, uh, Reese Fitzgibbons. You can compare him to a guy like J.R. Newman. There's so many lines you can connect, and here's the heavy press that we expected to see from Dobbins. Haverford has to escape it, limit turnovers. So far, they're looking good. Reese Fitzgibbons, good move. He's going to go up. Doesn't make the shot, but he gets the foul. I believe that'll be called on either Little or Hudson. We'll see what the official signals. He'll say it's on Salim Hudson. And again, Connor, this, Dob this Dobbins team is very physical, so they're going to get fouls. And that's something that the Fords are going to have to try and exploit, especially especially with this press here, right? I mean, if they can get easy early fouls, they can easily win this game. Fitzgibbons gets the first. Again, people don't, I mean, they understand, but they don't fully accept how critical foul shots are in high school basketball because so many games come down to one or two point possessions. As we get a couple substitutions here, we have George Demling in and sophomore Andrew Brown, who when talking to Coach Heinrichs, he was something, someone he really looked at. Yeah, he's going to be a guy who possibly you're going to see get good amount of playing time. As we see the Mustangs five out here is very similar, except we have Makai Ackridge in as Hudson for three. No good off the front of the rim. Bouncing around is the ball, and here's Brown, the guy right back to the Mustangs, up, good. That'll make it a 13 to 10 game. Looks like the Fords will have one more possession here in this first quarter. Down by three. Here comes the press. The thing is, with the press, there should always be an open man. The problem is they might be too far down the court to find a good pass. Five seconds, they gotta get a shot off Demling. He's looking, he's got three seconds. They go, Brown's got no time on the clock, and they don't get a shot off. And with the end of the first quarter, though, it was a very competitive one. Dobbins is up three. Yeah, and something that really the Fords really have to try and figure out here is how to limit the turnovers. I feel like right now that's what's hurting them. They're playing good basketball. They're playing great defense. I mean, they've only scored 13 points. And, I mean, the, they haven't even been playing horrible defense. It's really the turnovers that's hurting them. They need to protect the ball on the on the uh, press, and then try try and get good open shots off the press. Because, like you said earlier, somebody's always open. Coach Heidrichs has said the goal is always the same: you play hard and unselfish, and everything else takes care of itself. And it's as true as a statement as it can be. That you is, you play hard. You want if you want it more than the other team, you're going to get it. And now it's important to make a note here tonight. And this is the Hall of Fame tip-off night here at, a, at a Younger Gymnasium. I'm sorry, still transitioning for football. It's not A.G. Cornog Field this time. Um, so we'll take a quick shout-out here to the inductees of the 2023 Sports Hall of Fame here at Hartford High School. Sarah Bradley, Josh D'Angelo, Susan Fitzgerald Sims, Nick Giangelulo, Madison Hart, Kevin Layden, Michael McDermott, Jill Root, Martha Turkington, Joe Gallagher, Peter Zarelli, the Haverford High School boys golf teams from 89, 90, 91, and 92 coached 
by Tom Lalone. And of course, the special recognition award of 2023 goes to Edward R. Galley, class of 1943. If you want to become a member of the Sports Hall of Fame Club, you can email Kathy Kearns at hhsshof at havfordsd.net. If it's Gibbons, back up, and that's one way to put the Fords back. Yes, it is. And Fitzgibbons, I personally think, is going to be their spark here, Connor. He's got, he's probably one of the only guys that can dunk on this team. He's got the energy. The he, he's got it all. He's got everything you want from a player, both on the court and, and off the court. You know he's a guy who's fun to be around. But he's, he's going to be a guy who's going to be a leader. Another three ball, no good. Rattles around the rim. Good job by Keith Heinrichs boxing out Salim Hudson. The offense is back out there, down by one. They're looking to make something happen. Fitzgibbon goes up to Heinrichs. Heinrichs following his dad, calling out some orders. Keith Heinrichs trying to go up with it. No one's there. Good defense back to Fitzgibbons. Up top, Steigelman fakes it, driving in. Shot from the middle of the paint. No good, good board. Following his own shot, whistle blown. I think it'll be a call foul on Hanif Davis. Yeah, and Steigelman... Uh Andrew Steigelman is going to be one of their better players this year, especially off of what we saw last year when he got his late varsity minutes late in the year. He's going to be a really good ball player. Rach fires one down there to Heinrichs. He goes straight to, to Dembling. Back to Rach, 6.50 to go. Covered one-on-one. -on -one. They'll go back up top to Heinrichs. Now it's three-on-three three here with Steigelman covered by Hudson, the number. I mean, they're doing a good job of passing the ball around, trying to find the open man. Steigman trying to shoot that one. Good defense here, that ferocious defense. And another whistle blown. You see Zach Campbell here, just asking the officials for clarification. Something they always do. They want to know what they do wrong so Absolutely. they can so they can correct themselves. Absolutely. Good oh attempted pass to Fitzgibbon who was cutting in just out of reach of his outstretched arms. Tri he got tripped up a little, but some that's some there's some things that you just can't that's just not in your control. Hudson's going to take the ball up here for the Mustangs. Covered one-on-one -on -one with Heinrichs. They go to the corner. Back up top. Three ball. Campbell rattles around. No good board by Demlin. This is a game that Coach Heinrich said that if they take one of the first three here, they play a couple out of league, uh, out of conference opponents even, but it's games that can make or break your schedule as you look because it's all points-based. And we know Dobbins is going to be a good team. So the, the, a win here is huge for, for, for points and for ranking. It is because this, uh, like we said earlier, this Dobbins team went 25-3. and three. So if you beat them, every win you get is a ton of points. And that helps with your rankings no matter what your record is. If you have more points than somebody that's... Uh, got a better record than you, you can still be above them because of your points. And that's that's something that really comes into play when you're thinking as a coach just to just to um you know game plan, see how players are players are uh, how you ration your players, guys who start, like Coach Heinrich said, there's some guys on this team that he doesn't know if he wants if he's going to start in certain games because of just how they play. That's exactly right, Max. I couldn't have said it any better myself. What a pleasure it is to be back, truly. Watch us, Sebastian. I'm glad the winter season is back and uh, couldn't ask for much more. You got ice hockey, the basketballs, wrestling, cheer. And what do you know, HSM's got you covered. Yes, we do. Salim Hudson with 5.43 to go. They go to the short corner. Davis fires one over. They go in the 
paint here. Campbell up. They're going to get the foul that they wanted. And, Connor, this, the fouls are going to be, because the Fords don't use a deep bench, which today it's a little different, but not all the time. In the past, Coach Heinrichs has been known to not use a deep bench. Fouls are going to be a problem sometimes. And sometimes you just got to just take recognition of the fouls and then keep, like pull players when they need to be pulled. And that's one of the things, too, is that if you can limit your defensive fouls, it's such a big advantage that people don't understand. I agree. Campbell missed his first. He's going up for his second. No, he gets rattled by the Ford student section, misses both. Though Dobbins still up one. Strami walking by. Steigerman, good move, crossing over, up. Oh, good pass underneath. Morris up, swatted away. Gerald Little says no. Williams has it though, going across the baseline. Steigelman, three off the back of the rim. Good board, Fitzgibbon tries to go up with it. Morris has it. They're swinging it around. Williams, three, no. Good board by Dobbins, number five, Sam Thomas. And the Mustangs are off and running. At Makai, Ackridge, two more for the Mustangs. And Connor, I mean, the, the four just got a, that's, too many missed shot opportunities. And I know I know that not every shot's the easiest shot, but one of them's got to fall. You can't come away from that possession empty-handed after the two missed free throws. Good ball movement here. Steigelman has an open look. Just great defense by the Mustangs. Getting in his face. They double-team, box him out. He's got nowhere to go. 15-12. Campbell looks, whistle blow, the walk is called. That's a travel turnover, Ford's ball. And the Fords are just, this student section, the team, they're just rattling this Dobbins the, team. The atmosphere here, and this is the first game of the season versus an out elite. You come here, you watch this team versus like Lower Marion versus Upper Darby. I mean, the atmosphere here at uh, Younger Gymnasium is, is quite frankly unmatched. There's an open man, it's Heinrichs going down the court, but it just was not connected here. Obviously, a lot of these guys are multi-sport athletes. You want to mention Heinrichs, Morris. A lot of these guys are stars on the football field as well, Max. You know that. You're, you were on the team. Yeah, so I speak was. to how that, you know, can kind of, what they learn with football, with Coach Doc, can contribute and can play into what they, what they do here on the court. I mean, they, it's not even just playing sports. It's, it's actually hard to play multiple sports in high school because, Football is a very physical sport and not taxing conditioning wise. In basketball, you're always moving. So it's really hard to transition. That's why Coach Heinrichs, you haven't seen Keith and Owen Morris on the court for that long. Something you gotta keep in mind. I mean, you see a lot of that at Haverford High School. Two, three, four sport athletes. It's amazing to see. Yeah, it is. Open man is Morris this time. Again, look at this defensive movement they have. It's it's remarkable to watch as Williams fakes, fakes again, looking in. Steigelman back up top. Heinrichs, Morris, three ball. No good off the rim. Williams is there for the board. Billy goes up. Whoa, no good. Board pulled down. And they call a foul on Morris. Look to just be going up for the ball. Nonetheless, this is still a ball game. Three minutes to go. 15-12 in favor of the Dobbins Tech Mustangs coming here from Philadelphia. Bit of a car ride, a bus ride, I should say. It is a bit of a bus ride, but honestly, it's good experience for both teams. It though. is coming it is. and playing out of. I mean, they're going to go from Haverford to playing some weaker, you know, PPL opponents, and then going to play Imatep and, you know, um, Lincoln and Constitution. All these schools that are going to be very competitive. So it's a good balance for both these teams. Same thing as Haverford; they're going to be playing weaker opponents, and they're going to be playing, you know, riding or some of the top teams in the state. So. This is a very good game and probably one of the most competitive and physical games we're going to see all season long. This team is physical. Again, they claim it is a PPL championship or bust season. They want it so bad. Good ball here by number five, Sam Thomas. And that'll make it an 18-12 ball game. I mean, Connor, this the Fords really... Early in this uh, second quarter, they really picked up their defense. 
Their defense was not really, really good. And then they haven't seen many turnovers. It's just missed shots. They got to just get these shots falling. I mean, there was an open three by Morris. There was an open three by Billy Williams. There's a couple putbacks by uh, Andrew Steigelman and Reese Fitzgibbons. But it's the first game. So some of that stuff will come with time. It's just some of the stuff's got to fall now because you can't afford to lose an early game. And talking about the rich history of basketball at Dobbins, they have success with players like, you know, Bo Kimball, you know, the unfortunately late uh, Hank Gathers. They won the, the last time Dobbins won the PPL championship was in 1985, and that was with Bo Kimball and Hank Gathers on the court. They have, they have uh, you know, people like Don Staley who walked the court uh, and, and walked uh, the halls of that school, and they want to bring that sort of success with that sort of team back in it to their school, especially playing teams, you know, powerhouses in the city. So they want to bring that that rich history back into the halls of Merle Dobbins Technical School. Yeah. Um, th this Dobbins team is good, though, Connor. I mean, Absolutely. I mean, this is a team that is good and will be good for years to come, and that's because of that little bit. They got a lot of underclassmen on the bench who physical guys just as much as anyone else. Rage knocked down. No foul called. Going way up Tom Brady style. It's Makai. Akron drop over Fitzgibbon. And good. That's 20 to 12. Ford's down eight. No threat though. We've seen them come back from a lot worse deficits than this. We have. I mean, don't you remember the Garnet game from last year? That uh, down in town west, me and Tui were on the mic. I'll never forget the comeback they made. Unfortunately, fell short, but what a game that was. And it'll now be Dobbins' ball. Turnovers, once again, it's going to kill you. Yeah, I mean, that's turnovers are a big part of the game. If you turn the, like, turning the ball over is basically a free possession for the other team. And for a team like Dobbins, that free possession is going to result in points 90% of the time. Yes, it will. Some more substitutions. We have Kasim Jacobs check in for the first time all game. That's number four. But other than that, you still got your main guy. You still got Salim Hudson. You still got Zachary Campbell. Makai Ackridge is out there with Jacobs. And I cannot see their fifth guy. Oh, right in front of me. It's Sam Thomas rounding out their five. We have under two minutes to go here until we have our special guest interview. We're very excited for it. Student section loud and chanting and a double dribble is called. Can't carry like that. We're gonna call it. They're gonna get you on that. Rach, Morris, Stogman, Fitzgibbons, and Williams. The attackers here for the Fords. Again, it's this heavy press that Coach Heinrichs warned us of. Williams is wide open. Fitzgibbons does not go. They go to Stogman this time. This time, trying to go over to Williams, knocked out by. Ackridge. And Connor, this Dobbins defense is hounding the Fords off the press. And it's really shaking them up. And I think that's something that going into halftime, Coach Heinrichs really has to talk about. Morris trying to find an open man. No one's there. Got to watch his footing. Finds Fitzgibbons. Fitzgibbons up. No good. No whistle. And the Mustangs are back and running. Zach Campbell, the big man. No good. They get the whistle that they wanted. Coach Heinrichs rightfully not happy about that one. And I'm. It was a great. It was a great shot by uh, Zach Campbell. Just probably a questionable call there. I I can't say much because it's I'm not the ref. But we don't have the best vantage point either. Yeah. So they do our their job. We do ours. And Campbell does his. That's one. And it's by far the biggest lead of the game. Biggest swing of the game in either direction. It's 21-12. Dobbins looking to go up 10 with a successful bucket by Campbell here. Campbell leading their team in points today. And Campbell's a really good ball player. He, he's, he's got the hops. They all, they all got the hops, but he's quick. He's got the shot, as we saw earlier. So, I mean, he's somebody that they can they just rely on. Under a minute to go here in the first half. Steigelman, heavy contact. 
forced up against Campbell, trying to find an open man. There's Rach, Rach. Pump fakes, driving, baseline. They're gonna get number four, Kasim Jacobs on some contact down low. Rach will throw this ball in with 39 to go. He's gonna have Fitzgibbons right here to his left. He's gonna look to his right, cross the baseline. It's gonna be Owen Morris. There's some movement, Williams popping out. He's gotta find someone, they go to Fitzgibbons. Fitzgibbons back up top, Morris. No open look, Steigerman gets it off the backboard. No good, 30 seconds, Mustangs offensive ball. Looks like they're gonna slow it down and sort of see what they can do. They don't wanna waste the possession. He just looked over to Coach Stanton there. He said one shot. Stanton gave him the one back. Looks like they're playing for the last shot here. Good move by Gerald Little. Shot rattles out, no good. They get the board, knocked away from Fitzgibbons. Reese Fitzgibbons says no, not right now. That's what you call an athlete right there. I mean, Dobbins has been able to go up all they want. And I mean, Fitzgibbons just throws it away. In front of the student section too, that's, uh, that's where you want to do it. They'll get uh, the Mustangs, they call a timeout, have some time to talk it over. They're gonna write up one last play, draw up one last hope here to put some points on the board before we head into the half. It's 22 to 12, Dobbins on top in a much more competitive game than the score shows. Yeah, the, this, Dobbins, this Dobbins team is really working the Ford's defense. But the Ford's, the Ford's defense is actually not playing too bad. Be considering what this Dobbins team is doing. And like you said, the score does not reflect how close this game is. Just a couple scores here and there, and this game's within three points. Still a very winnable game for Haverford. It'll be Dobbins' ball. Right in front of the student tech. They pop it out to Ackridge. Ackridge goes to Little. Little finds an open shot at the top of the key. Bounces left of the rim. Steigelman's going to have to throw up a miracle. Oh. Not quite there. 22 to 12. <laughs> 22 to 12. Fords down 10 as we head into halftime as we have a very special guest. Give us one minute to get situated. Don't you guys go anywhere. This is arguably the best part of the night. And we are back, and I'm joined by a special guest. You want to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Jack Cavanaugh. I am nine years old, and I come from Coopertown Elementary School. How are you doing, Jack? I'm doing great. Um, what do you want to talk about today? Uh, our 76ers. Go Sixers, go Sixers. Um, what are some, what's some points you want to hit on here? You want to talk about... The big man in the middle, Joel Embiid? Yeah. What do you, what do you think about Joel Embiid? How, how do you think his season's going so far? I think it's going great. And um, I, think they're, I think he can improve. But I think he's doing really good. Yeah, what about, what about the young guy, Tyrese Maxey? 
I think he's he's now one of my favorite players. He's just doing so good. No one really expected him to be this good, and he comes out of you know being sort of the third or fourth man last year, and he's coming and being a top guy on the Sixers. What do you think about the other night? The Sixers played the Lakers, won by 44 points, and that was the biggest loss of LeBron James' career. Did you watch that game? I did. How was that game? It was, I, it was, it was insane. I was going crazy. It's amazing. Biggest loss of his career, handed by the 76ers. So Jack, we were talking earlier, you're nine years old? Yes. At Coopertown? Yeah. And you said your favorite sport, baseball? Baseball. But if you could, your, your dream is to be a broadcaster one day. Yes. And if you could broadcast any team, what did you say it would be? Uh, the Eagles. The Eagles, broadcasting. The Eagles, what, what do you feel about the Eagles? You like them this uh, year? Yes. You think they're going to win the Super Bowl? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. What, what do you feel about the tush push? It's, the, I don't Unstoppable? It's, no one can beat it. No one can beat it. So what, what about um, Phillies? Phillies are what about What about the deep playoff run the Phillies made? Um, did you watch the playoff games? I did. Nice. Yeah. Just fell fell short in the end, but I thought when they beat the Braves, they were gonna they were gonna be able to do it. But Diamondbacks gave him a gave him a battle. Thought they were gonna make it all the way. I mean, Jack, how do you feel about the, that re-signing of Aaron Nola? Yeah, I was I'm happy about it. I, I wanted him. I I I thought he was gonna leave, but I'm happy he stayed. Philly for life, right? Yep. Um, well, Jack, it's great having you here today. Jack, Thank it's you. always a pleasure. Just Thank one you. more question. Yeah. You're watching the game. Haverford's losing right now. You think they can pull through? You think they're going to win this game? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like that mentality, Jack. Jack, keep chasing your dream. One day, me and Max, all of us at HSM, Haverford Sports Media, we know you're going to make it big when you get to high school. You're going to be sitting here in this exact spot. I know it. So keep chasing your dream. We're proud of you. We're happy um, that you were here. And thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you.
What an energetic, eventful fan of the game that was to start the basketball season off, Max. Yeah, that was great. I mean, I mean, he's right. He, he lists all the whole roster, all full of dogs, full of athletes. They're gonna go out there and win a basketball game. Up, oh, Stylman, no good off the rim. Looked like off the Mustangs. Yep, absolutely off of Campbell's foot. Haverford's offensive possession remains. And, I mean, while we were away, Ford's had a big three. 24 to 15. I wonder, Max, if you were Coach Heinrichs, what would you have said to the guys um, in the locker room at half? We got to calm down on offense. That's it. I mean, our only mistake is we're turning over the ball a little too much, but it's okay. Just sl slow down, calm down, and try and find the open man in the press. Here's a deep three for the Fords. Good, Devlin, yes. 24-18, Mustangs answer right back. 27-18. Heinrichs loses it. They go over to Reach. They wanted the travel call, but Heinrichs is going to get the time all, time out off just before. And, Connor, that was a big shot by George Demling, but the Ford's defense fell asleep. Let, let a man get open on the wing, and he just popped on. That's it. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be, can whatever team is trailing answer back? And that's... What the four is going to have to try to do right now. I mean, by the looks of it right now, this, this, this Musta these Mustangs have an answer for almost, and I mean almost, anything the Fords throw at them. Whether it's three balls, whether it's trying to get down and dirty in the paint. I mean, they have an answer for all of it. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it any better myself, Max. <laughs> 27-18. It's a ball game. It is still absolutely a ball game. Yes, it is, Connor. Ford's ball here. Need some points. Demling just hit a big three. They go back to Rach. Fitzgibbon's wide open in the middle. This time they shift back the zone. Stockman open three. They go up top. Heinrichs fakes. No good. Falling down. Stays back up. Good recovery by Heinrichs. Over to Stockman. Stockman fakes to his left. Crosses back up. He resets. Rach. Left quarter. Heinrichs driving in. Back up top. It's good ball movement. Stogelman three fake. Step back. Another one. Bang! The three ball is carrying the Fords tonight. But here come the Mustangs. They're going to try to get one right back. Yeah, the Fords have to get back on defense here. Don't let them answer so the Fords can. That's a free possession if they can't. Hanif Davis finds Thomas under. But he goes up no good. And the Fords are only down six. And they're coming back strong. Rach. Back up top. Fitzgibbons in the middle. The paint driving. Kicks. Heinrichs. Three ball. Whistle blown. He's going to get the foul and go to the line. Four, three. That's big for the Huge. Fords. It's, I mean, right here, they get a break. They get to calm down. Like, collect themselves. And then... Hopefully, Demling makes these three, or makes these last two, and they get two free points out of here. That's exactly right. You're down six. Momentum is fully in your favor. Looks like you got Campbell and Steigelman down here. Heinrichs is going to be one-on-one -on -one there with, looks like, Gerald Little. And we get a sub, McClaffer Ian McClaffrey in for uh, Jack Rach. Zach Campbell, 6'4". This, this guy is an animal in front of us. He's a physical guy. It's a big guy, and it's an athletic guy. He's a monster. Look at this movement here by the Mustangs. Another three. No good. Stogman gets the board over to Heinrichs. Fords down four. Here's Stogman. Demling calling for McClafferty, who's in, to come up. McClafferty's running to the short quarter. Keith in the wings now cutting in. They go to Demling. Demling loses the ball, picks it back up. He's looking inside. No one's there. Pivot, triple threat. They reset in the middle of McClafferty. He shoots off the front of the rim just short. 
And the Mustangs fire a long one to Zachary Campbell. Campbell's good up and the foul. That's just a tough play. McClafferty had, uh, Ian McClafferty had him locked up. He was in his face. It was just a great play by Campbell. Yeah, that's, that's the physicality we're talking about. Being able to draw that foul and finish. Execute the shot. We'll have some subs here. Demling's out. Morris is in. And Campbell's at the line for his and one. Oh, man, that's his third missed foul shot. But look at this defense. Oh, and they're going to call number 10, Hanif Davis, on that. And He's not happy. And Connor, this Ford student section is getting rowdy. I mean... They're loud. They're they really are. loud. And it's I think it's getting into the into the Mustangs' head. That's exactly what our uh, fan of the game just said. Here you go. This is the ball movement they need. Breaking the zone press. Down six. Heinrichs drive. Dish out. Morris. Morris back up to the wing. Steigelman hits it. Should be off contact. Yep, they're gonna say it was tipped. That's a good call by the officials. As the Mustangs have some substitutions coming in at the next stoppage, the Fords got to punch one in. McClafferty inside, Steigelman fakes back up top. Heinrichs, Morris, corner three. Back rim bounces once again. Steigelman gets the board, reset. Heinrichs, 3.23. Good fake, good drive, good kick, good three. Another one. Threes are playing a big part in this Ford's game plan right now, and, and that's going to go over. Another attempted deep pass down the court to Hanif Davis, and Davis could not pull it in. The Fords are down three, and momentum is fully on their side. The student section is loud, Connor, and this is helping the Fords. I've been told by many guys, if they have a full student section, they play so much better. Absolutely. Student support, especially from your peers, is huge. Fitzgibbons is open. He drives. Foul. And it's a foul call. That's the Mustangs. Fourth foul here. They're going to be getting in trouble soon. Ford's trying to get open off the foot of Fitzgibbons, it looked like, and the Mustangs are off. Got to set your feet if you're going to step up on D. Mustangs, three, no good. Fitzgibbons is going to pull that one down, slow it down. Give it to Stogman and let the team do its thing. Let it run its course. Very winnable game. Three ball over defender, way short. It's good look, just good defense. Campbell, yeah, some contact there by Steigelman. Campbell's gonna draw the shot and he'll go to the line. Excuse me, draw the foul and he'll go to the line for three. Yeah, that was a, that was a great shot attempt by Ian McClafferty. It's just just short. It's good defense stepping up. Yeah, I mean that. Maybe there was a better shot, but I still like that shot. There was two guys on him. It's, it's a gutsy shot. Zachary Campbell, that's his fourth or fifth miss of the night now. And again, this, this Ford's, like, like our fan of the game said, this Ford student section is very loud, and they're getting in his head. And I feel like that's really affecting him right now. They are loud. They are rowdy. And this is one of the best players in the Philadelphia Public League. He's going to make that one. Like, like the saying is, you can't make them all, but you also can't miss them all. I like that, Max. You, even the worst basketball player makes at least one I shot. Mean, I'll, I'll make a foul shot every once in a while, and I'm pretty far down there on the hierarchy <laughs> of basketball skill. And his third misses. He goes one for three on this series of foul shots, and the fours are down four. Heinrichs dribbling through defenders. Morris looking. No one. Good pivot just not the pass that could be connected if he dump off there and a little little dribbles oh he's covered by Heinrichs and a deep contested three off the front of the rim who else but Stogelman to pull that one down two minutes to go here in the third about 10 minutes of basketball left until this game has a winner Stogelman takes it up oh he almost draws it's a good coast to coast by Stogelman I mean this kid I mean he got hurt last year he decided to, he, he came back. Googie Simon, 
told him, told his dad, or told Coach Heinrichs, put Seigelman in. He did it, and he showed he's yep. supposed to be playing varsity basketball. And he's proving it tonight on his first opening night of his 2023-2024 season. He misses his second shot there. I mean, he's a junior, too. He's got another year. Three ball by Makai. Ockridge is no good, but the Dobbins Mustangs get the rebound. We're under two minutes to go here in the third. Coach Heinrichs wanting a defensive switch. He's going to get it. That's a good call here. They're going to run this man defense. Mars one-on-one -on -one with Little. They dish out three ball. Good. Again, the Mustangs answering back almost every time. Heinrichs fires forwards down six, 122 to go. Steigelman picks up his dribble, calling for something to happen. Heinrichs is there off the fingertips of Zachary Campbell. It'll stay. No, it won't. They're saying it hit the forwards. It clearly went off Zachary Campbell's finger. They're saying it must have hit a Haverford player. And that's a big break for the Dobbins. Con Connor, I don't know about that call. The ref here had the best angle, but he asked the ref all the way across the court. Ford's defense has to step it up. They do. They do. The off the, and again, like we said earlier, the offense has to stop turning the ball over. That's and it. That's, that's what Coach Heinrichs told us. That if we want to win this game, we have to prevent turnovers and we have to escape this heavy press. So far, they're doing both, but not as effective as they want to. Fitzgibbons, his second huge block of the night. Not right now. Now, maybe Vix Gibbons is not getting it done on the offensive side. I think, what, he's got three or four, like three, five points. But he's getting it done on the defense. He's a force. I don't know about that one, Connor. He's going to go to the line. No more further comment about that one. Campbell, been the leader all night. Campbell, he's been rattled at the line all night. There's the screaming that entices him. And he just can't seem to, to execute. Under a minute to go. Steigelman, he's got Billy Williams way up the court, except he fires to his left. It's Heinrichs, kicks out, rage, quarter three. Long, good board by Kasim Jacobs. They fire long. That's going to be the push on the back from Heinrichs, I think. As it looks like Devling's going to check in. I'm guessing it'll be Heinrichs coming out. Ford's defense really needs to step up, and that's actually Heinrichs' fourth, Connor. Five fouls for Dobbins, four for the Ford. Both teams getting dangerously close to trouble. 30 seconds, they might be trying to just play for the last shot. 26 seconds, 25. Another open look by Little, but he'll go back up top to Jacobs with 14 seconds. They've just been passing the ball back and forth to each other this whole 20 seconds. They're definitely looking for last shot. They're going to get one off. Nothing but net again. Makai Ackridge. They're going to get the travel call. And that should wrap up here the third quarter of play. And we head into the fourth with the Fords down 11. And yet at one point it was as close as four. Yeah, I mean, again, like we've been saying all night, Connor, the defense has to step up. And with the, they called a travel on Fitzgibbons. They did. They called it at the end there. It's not going to point seven seconds. So assuming that nothing's going to happen here. But... We'll see. Nothing's impossible, especially with the height that this Dobbins team has. They're going to just fly one up like that. Good defense. Demling knocks it down. Um, Connor. Max, you're Coach Heinrichs right now. you got a minute and a half to talk to these guys. We're down 11 when we're in this game. What are you telling them? Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. That's, our, that's what's been hurting us all year, Connor. It's our turnovers. Or not, sorry, not all year, but this game. 
Um, I mean, the amount of times we turn the ball over is a little scary because you can't. If you turn the ball over too much, you you may, you basically just give keep giving the team a free possession. Yeah, I mean it's it's exactly right. Got to limit that, and you've got to execute. I mean it's. Nothing else you could say about it. nothing else. Got to execute the offensive end and step up on defense. Nothing, nothing else allowed. Weak. All right, so now we got the stat sheet up. This is not 100% accurate, accurate, just to put that out there. But I trust our statisticians, and we're going to see what they got. They say... Points. They say Steigelman leads with 10, Fitzgibbons with 7, Demling with 5, and Rach with 3. That is what our statisticians have. And for the Mustangs, they have Campbell with 16. That seems about accurate. So Campbell's looking for an 18-point night as the Mustangs have the ball here to start out this fourth quarter of play. Good move, left, up, Campbell, no good, rattles out off the fingertips of Demling this time. And Connor, as as you saw on the stat, as we talked about on the stat sheet, it's really, all you see the scoring is, is really... It's, it's Gibbons and uh, Steigelman. Yeah, and guys like senior, senior guys, not even the seniors, the guys that are just on the court, the, like majority of the time, like Demling, Williams... McClafferty, Morris, Heinrich, say all the people just got to step up because you can't expect expect one guy to score, and I think that's going to happen later on in the season. Yep, I think you'll start to see it too. I do. Again, it's the first game of the season, not a league matchup, but still a must win. Corner three, no good. Good board by Williams. Seven minutes to go here it's a great in what has been a fantastic matchup of basketball. Yes, that was a great closeout by Demling too. I mean, he got there. As like, really fast. Look at Steigelman physical. Oh, no whistle, but won't matter. Mustangs get the ball. Here goes Campbell. Nothing. That's good. 18 for the big man. They now go up 13. They find Fitzgibbons in the middle. Again, this game is not over. Devlin. Fouls reset here, so that'll just be the first of the night, and it'll send Demling to the line. That's good. So they'll get one. Demling. Another one off the right side of the rim this time. It will not fall. So the Fords go down 12. And again, that's just a couple threes. Some good defense, and this game's in their favor. So do not count them out quite yet. What they have to do is stop the bleeding here from the Dobbins offense. Another three ball. Yes! Because why not? The Mustangs just exploding from the perimeter. Yeah, I mean, again, it's the defense, and right now, that's the reason why the Mustangs are out 43-28. Demling recovers from that pass, and they're going to say it's off of Ford, and the wheels are starting to fall off here. Yeah, they are, but, you know. Is he... Here come the marching Mustangs. Marching down the court, that was, Max. Connor, I don't know what you're saying right now. <laughs> Slowing the pace of this game. Rach one-on-one -on -one with Little. They go over number 10, 
Hanif Davis with the three, and that's point number 20 for Zachary Campbell. Five oh six to go. Ford slowly losing it. Good pass, knocked off. Five minutes to go. We apologize, we're having some technical issues. Rach looked for Morris inside, but he goes to Fitzgibbons instead. That's point number nine for Reese Fitzgibbons. It's a tough shot, Connor. I mean, Fitzgibbons is one of those guys who's hard nosed and just knows how to get himself to the basket. That's exactly right. Coach Heinrichs calling for an extra man to help on defense. And I got to watch out wide. He says Keith Heinrichs is there. Keith, oh, we read that one good. Steigelman's there as a body, but it's just going to go up and good. That's number five. Sam Thomas, his points. Fourth, now down 17. Campbell, you can't do that one. Campbell saying, I got one more. You can't take me out yet. I got one more. Coach Stanton. Trying to figure it out. Yeah, he's going to have to take him out here just to be safe. You don't want him fouling out or anything. So that might be the last time we see Campbell on the court. You obviously, he, he's not happy. He never wants to be in that position where he's taken out because of fouls. And he's a physical team, physical player. Four twenty-two to go. Steigelman bouncing up top. He goes to Rach who fakes the post. And they're swinging it around the perimeter. Fitzgibbon step back three off the rim. No good. Morris goes up for the board. Just outbodied by, by uh, Hudson, Salim Hudson. Coach Heinrich said Hudson was the guy in the summer matchup, and I said, what do you guys, what do you think of Campbell? And uh, it's a bit of an unknown. I don't know if he didn't play in the summer matchup, if he just wasn't as big as a factor, but the Mustangs just getting looks after looks, and boards after boards, and that's just being bigger. Fitzgibbons is there, though. He's that guy for the four. They're gonna slow it down. They have no need to force shots. They shouldn't. Here goes Hanif Davis setting the screen, trying to create some open space. Gerald Little dribbling all around the court. He's got 200 steps just in this one possession. And that one's going to be caught on range. I remember when it was an accomplishment for me to get 200 steps in a day. Was Three, a 319 to go forward. Still down 17. Timeout called. That was a while ago, though, Connor. Long ago. Connor... This game is not over, though. No, it's not. I mean, they're only... I know I, I say only, but they really are only down 17. Yeah, and you're still just over three minutes, and you're... It's, it, it, it's tough. Let's not put it, you know, lightly. It's, it's not a, you know, one or two possession game, but it is not out of the picture for this team to come back. But what they have to do is play better defense. Yeah, I mean, three minutes and 19 seconds is more than enough time to get 17 points. Yeah, well, especially because basketball is such a game of swings, and if you just get a couple possessions, go your way, knock down some threes, you're sitting all right, but the main thing is defense. I mean, I mean, like, the that's the reason why they call um, Stephen Curry one of the biggest, like, innovators in the game. He really revolutionized the three-pointer, which... I mean, the three-pointer, right. it's 17 points. How many shots does that take again? About six. Six shots? Six That's would put you up one, assuming your defense can step up, but the Mustangs are going to continue to look to just pound points on and try to expose the gaps and the seams. This Ford's defense, yep, they're going to call that one all day. Oh, Dobbins text defense. Yeah, so if you shut down Dobbins for the rest of the day and you make six three-pointers, you win this game. That's what I'm saying. It's a, value, it's a valuable shot. Especially with this team. They are sharp shooting and they can make plays. Heinrichs goes up off the back of the rim. Campbell, back in the game, will pull that one down. 248 
And Connor, that's a great shot by Heinrich. That's a great shot. I, 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 nine out of ten times, I'm telling him to take that because he's probably going to make it. What the trap? They're not going to get it. Two thirty, and Dobbins Tech wants to just kind of take it in victory position, dribbling it around Ackridge over to Salim Hudson, wide open quarter is Little, and they're going to call the walk on Jared Little. I mean, you got to you. It might not have been a walk, but refs got to find some way to speed the game up. I mean, the fact that there's no high, shot clock in high school means that a guy can hold the ball for two and a half minutes. That's exactly right. And it's, I mean, it's not something you typically see, but it's something you absolutely can see. Is there's going to be some substitutions getting the shooters out there on the court. You want, you, all five of the, your guys, you want them to be able to take a shot if they need to be. So you're going to get, you know, the hot hands out there. Get the guys who can make the shots, and they're going to lose possession here. It's definitely good defense. Campbell, good pass. Little up and good. And that'll you know, pretty much seal the deal here, or very close to it. A couple scores away from putting the Fords away, but the Fords, very promising. A very promising game. Lots of flashes of what could be a successful season and what will be a successful season. Rage, good Damn move! Long. And Connor, I mean, this this game does not define your season. Absolutely not. It, sure, you want to go out and win it, but losing this game does nothing but teach. And that's exactly what they needed against it. one of the better teams they'll see all season long. And yeah, yeah, this is probably arguably one of the best teams we'll see all season long. So getting this close to a win means you guys got something good. Absolutely. This is a team that's going to go out there and they're going to shock Lower Marion. They're going to shock Radnor. This is going to be a good basketball team. I mean, I mean, we talk about guys like teams like Lower Marion. They lost a bunch of people last year. So, and so, mean, so did Haverford, but they look to be, you know, a bit of a rebuilding team. I think their goal is make district playoffs. You know, go out there, get, get, a, get a spot and start dancing. Um, and that's all you need. It's a game of streaks. Zachary Campbell, I was going to say, way over a couple defenders off of the foot of Ty Lee Richardson, who checks in. And, and Connor, I mean, right, we talked to Coach Heinrichs. His biggest point was he really likes his team because they all like each other. Yep. He said the bond of this team is something that you don't see a lot of teams have. They all like each other. They like playing for each other. They like playing for the name on the front of the jersey and not the name on the back. It is a team first mentality. Three, no good off the rim. Follows his own shot. Rach on the baseline, bouncing up to the wing. He's looking. Morris cutting in. Fix to Williams. Goes short quarter. Way across the court. Demling, three, no good. Rach, gets the board. Contact foul called on Dobbins Tech. I mean, Jack Rach is really hawking these rebounds down. He, it, se it really seems like he just doesn't want to give up. There might be 51 and a half seconds left, but he does not care as he lines up to take a one-on-one -on -one here. Yeah, this is a guy who you could be down 30 points with 10 seconds, and he's going to be playing just as physical as a one-point game. This is a guy who has a lot of grit. Is the right word you could use. He is a determined guy. He's going to be tenacious every single game. And you're, it's what you're going to have to expect to see from him. Yeah, and as you see right now, George Demling taking a seat probably for the rest of the game. And Andrew Brown coming in. A young guy. I think we might be seeing a little bit more of him later in the year. Yeah, he's going to be one of these guys who kind of... You have, you know, set four guys. And that's, you know, Rach and... Uh, Fitzgibbons and Steigelman and Heinrichs. And then another one, 22 for the big guy. But then that fifth spot, it can truly be any of the Morris, Billy Williams, McLafferty. I mean, you can fill it up with four or five guys and Brown himself. So the, this Fords team has a lot of depth, and that's something that you like to see. Yeah, I mean, that's something that they didn't have last year either. I mean, they had their, at the beginning of the year, they had their starting five of uh, Simon, Bright, Wiener, Wright, and uh, Gannon. And then they had got the guys off the bench, like Heinrichs, and um, St they had Steigelman late in the year. You had uh, Will Cascarina coming off the bench. Will Cascarina was a big body off the bench, which, honestly, they don't really have much of that year. And... 
like you said earlier, this is the first time since when? Oh, what? 2017, there's not a Simon. Yeah, 2017. That's a while. You all, you've had a Simon for that long. And when we say you have a Simon, it's, you know, it's, it's a big deal because they are aggressive, dominant players at every level. They are. I mean, Googie was a three sport athlete and was varsity for all three of them in multiple years. He, he was a varsity kicker for the, Ford's fo for the football team, two-year varsity kicker. He was, I think, a three-year starter for the soccer team. Yep, and he captain he, of the soccer team. And wasn't he a four-year varsity player for the basketball team? He was. Yep, he started. He was on varsity his freshman year with his brother. So, I mean, that's insane. As this game comes to a close, Ford's lose one early in the season, 51-36. to 36. Connor? It was a pleasure calling this game with you. Max, first of many. And, uh, you know, we had ourselves quite the game to open this season up. This team's going to win. This team's going to win a lot of games. And that's the bottom line. This was a learning game. We weren't expecting this game to go out there and define the season. This is a game against one of the best teams they'll face all season long. A team that'll probably make a deep run in the States. A team that could win their, you know, conference once again. Dobbins Tech, a 51-36 win over the Fords in a learning game. So we'll ask Jack, any final words? Oh, good. It was a pleasure having you here. We're so happy you were able to make it out. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward in just a handful of years. You'll be here doing this job. So thanks for that. And uh, congrats to all the Hall of Fame inductees once again. Dobbins Tech comes out on top, 51-36. Stay on the lookout of our social medias, at Havard Sports Media. Find out when we're broadcasting next, and uh, stay tuned. Boys basketball, girls basketball, ice hockey, wrestling, cheer, bocce. We got everything coming your way. Stay tuned.